Well, today we're bringing you a very short therapy and theology. Mm -hmm. And the reason it's short is we intentionally want to give you something to hold on to when you are facing situations you just think, I don't know if I'm going to make it. Like, this is hard. In therapy and theology, we talk a lot about hard situations, hard relational dynamics, hard life dynamics. And, you know, sometimes we may just hit a day where you need something to return to, where three people who care deeply about you shares just a nugget of wisdom of what we do when we hit those spots. We think, we're just not gonna make it because we want you to know you are gonna make it. So of course I'm here with Dr. Joel Mutamale and licensed professional counselor, Jim Cress. Mm -hmm. So who wants to go first on those days you think, I'm not gonna make it. Let's just give our listeners a gift. You are gonna make it and here's why. Um, you're not alone, mm. you know, you're not alone sure. and you're part of a story. And that story is the story of God's people. And there's a long history of people that have felt the exact same way that you're feeling. I've felt it, I know that both of you guys have felt it. And there's one scripture reference that I go back to often. This is uh, at the epicenter of the people of Israel's just torment and torture mm -hmm. in, in Egypt under the oppression of Pharaoh. And I think they felt like that, like, I'm not gonna make it out. This is horrific. This is what uh, Moses tells us that in Exodus 2 or 3 verse 7, it says, and the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people in Egypt and I've heard them crying out because of their oppressors. I know about their sufferings, and I have come down to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians. So those three descriptive words that God sees, that God hears, and that he knows, and that those three realities let us know that he is a God who acts as well. Um, and so we can know that's true about God. I love that, Joel, because I think it's so comforting for us to know that God is not just omniscient, omnipotent, but He's personal. Right. And mm -hmm. when He He looks at people, He doesn't just see a crowd. He really not only sees, but hears and cares deeply for the yes. individual hearts. So mine will dovetail right off of that because I think it's crucial on this macro level to understand those principles of how big God is and how intimate God is at the same time. Mm -hmm. I want to go to Mark chapter 14. You know I go here mm -hmm. often because when I was in some of the lowest moments of my life, laying in my bed, weeping, um, taking my arm and, and, you know, just out of habit, putting my hand across and realizing there's mm -hmm. no one else in my bed. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I used to feel so safe. Bedtime used to be my most favorite time to go and, and just lay in my bed. And it was just like the day was wrapping up, and this was my safe little cocoon. And, and you know, I had a person, my person there beside me. And so it was a massive adjustment for me to get used to the dark, for me to get used to the silence, for me to get used to feeling afraid, mm. for me to get used to, you know, just coming home and, and there not being anybody there, you know? And so there, that, there was, that was a lot. So I just wanted to know, does Jesus get it? Because if, if I know that Jesus gets it, the depth of this pain, then I'll be able to trust his, his advice. I'll be able to trust his teaching on a different level. It's hard to trust somebody's teaching when you're not sure if they really have ever experienced the yeah. depth of the hurt and the pain that you have. And so in Mark chapter 14, right before Jesus goes to the cross, he's in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he says that his soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. And here's what's so fascinating to me. This is Jesus, you know? And and I used to think, if I only knew why this was happening to me, that it would ease the ache of my sorrow. And yet here's yeah. Jesus, who had access to all answers. I mean, he was full divinity and absolute humanity. He was very much sinless, but absolutely sinned against. And he had access to all answers, and yet he was overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Mm. So it made me realize even if I had the answers as to why this was happening, how long was it gonna go on, all of those questions, those answers wouldn't comfort me because I would still sit in the source of my sorrow because sorrow isn't comforted by the answers. You might not even like the answers that you were given, even mm -hmm. if you could get them. And then Jesus goes on to say, God, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me. And that was also mind-blowing to me because I very much know what it's like to say, 
the first part of Jesus' statement, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow. I just think that this might absolutely kill me. I'm not going to make it, right? And then to kind of feel like a little angst, God, everything is possible for you. In other words, God, you could fix this, so why aren't you? You could change this. I don't want this to be my story. And so knowing that Jesus experienced the depth of my pain made me realize that I could trust what he taught next. And there's just this little simple saying as he concludes this time of deep sorrow and crying out to God where he says, yet not what I will, but what you will. In other words, Jesus trades his will for thy will because he's so confident God will. Now, that may seem like a big biblical answer, but here's what it really did to me as I was laying in my bed, weeping, thinking, I'm not going to make it. It made me realize that not only does God see me and care about me and is intimately interested in my life, but it also made me realize this is one of the reasons that Jesus came, because He cared about moments like this. He came and walked the brutal realities of this earth not just to make atonement for my sins, like we learn in Hebrew, but also to be a merciful and faithful high priest so that he could feel what I feel and he could model what to do. And so we look at the life of Jesus and his teaching. We must always filter the reality that he hmm. knows the depth of human angst and pain and betrayal and all of those emotions. And so it's from that place that he taught what he taught. Hmm. I love, uh, I mean, what a biblical theology. And we didn't practice this beforehand. It's like, hey, I'm going to do this and you're going to do that. And I just love, like, the Exodus passage. He sees, he heard, he observes, and he says, I'm going to come down. And what you just said is the fulfillment of he came down. Mm. He did come down in the person of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. I'd like to add, if I may, um, as Brother Joel has said so well, we didn't rehearse and practice this or script this on the teleprompter. Um, I use a lot of music, mm -hmm. and you know that. Um, in my work and um, uh, just a, a resource. We've used it. I remember at a book launch we used it, but Hillary Scott singing uh, Thy Will Be Done. Mm -hmm. I play that so many times and to use the, the language of the song, Lord, I know you're good, but it don't feel good right, right now. now. Mm -hmm. And that's just that honesty to come to God with your red dot. The red dot says you are here. And to say, and then, Thy will be done, the song lyric, right? But I can go there and I jump, oh, that will be done. Uh, I can go and say, I, I feel like a mess, and Lord, I don't know, and let this cut pass. Might have some angst or anger or other emotions, but uh, just being real when I come and say, okay, you know, thy will be done. That's so profound, Jim, that you would mention that because that song and this this mm -hmm. whole understanding of Jesus hurting like we hurt and being in the garden and exchanging his will for God's will so that um, he was so confident that God would do so. Thy will be done. The song and that teaching is the very reason, no matter how you feel about tattoos, please don't send me ugly letters about uh, tattoos. Uh, we can cover that on another therapy and theology, yeah, right? <clears throat> but my girls and I, and I'll just show it to you, mm -hmm. my girls and I went and got this tattoo all in the same place on our arm. And it's written in ancient Aramaic. At least, I don't know ancient Aramaic, so I really hope that it really says what it says. I hope it doesn't say sure like, it does I like chicken sour, you know, sweet and sour chicken or something. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're good. But, but to you it means. Yeah, yes, supposedly, according to the monk that wrote it on a piece of leather yeah, that go. we then had it tattooed on our arms, it says, thy will be done. Yeah. And you're doing a good job with the Aramaic. You're reading from the right to the left, not the... Um, the left to the right. Yeah. So great job. Thank you. That proves it's accurate right there. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Well, and the reason it was so important for me to have it mm -hmm. with me all the time is because I wanted to look at it. I wanted to remind myself because healing and hurting both happen on a very daily basis. So, Jim, what would you say is your go-to? I love that you love music. Um, is there anything else on those days you feel like, ah, oh, I'm not going to make it? And what you could share that transferable wisdom to Oh, us. yeah. Um, these you both know, and one you know I use a lot. I'm going to start with Nehemiah, and then I'm going to go to the words of St. Paul. Um, I, I love in Nehemiah, at least in two places. First, and this is for you today, and I have this over my life on a daily basis. He prays to God, and he says two things, the vertical mm. and the horizontal. You get to do this, folks. It's in the Bible. 
He said, grant us success today because we go, we're going to go rebuild our lives. We're mm. going to go forward. Grant us success. And then I need on the horizontal before a man who was King Artaxerxes, would you grant me favor? One version would say mercy. But grant me favor. And then maybe I say, as you go into this conversation, Lord, it's not a demand. It's a desire. Thy will be done. Grant me favor in this conversation, if you will. But I want you to grant me success. Why? Because in two places, and here's what it says the king granted him what he asked for. Watch, because the good hand of my God is upon me. Mm. Wait, the good hand of my God is upon me for good. And you're going to hear that in Romans 8, 28, but clear back here. Mm. God's good hand, if you're walking with Christ, God's good hand is upon you for good. He intends good. Mm. And then I'll said I'd go over here to Paul. Um, I don't even need, I can quote it. We all can quote it, right? In Philippians 1, 6, that he, Jesus, God, Son, Spirit, Father, he who began this good work in you, hey, you don't have to carry the ball by yourself. He will continue to perfect that and perform that in until yeah, we get to heaven when the race is finally mm. run. That is, he will be doing his work. We do our work down here, right? There, there's no question about that progressive sanctification. But God's good hand is on me. He is good hand is on you and everyone at this table, and he's going to keep perfecting. And I say, Jesus, keep doing your work. Mm -hmm. And that's appropriate perfectionism, but it's all about Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Jim. And on a practical level, you taught me one time three things to do when I'm overwhelmed mm -hmm. and just feeling triggered or flooded with emotion. And I just am having one of those panic moments that full of anxiety. I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to make it. You know, I won't get through this. And you said practically that it's scientifically proven that if you'll go and drink four ounces of water, it will reduce yeah. your anxiety. Who knew, right? Mm -hmm. Then you also said, give it about 20 minutes. Don't make any decisions. Don't have any conversations. You know, just give it 20 minutes. And, and that's about how long it takes for The amygdala, amygdala back here where trauma is stored, fear to calm down. Mm -hmm. And who knew? Isn't that funny? I know you know this. It's rhetorical. God knew. That's right. God designed this whole thing with the water and with the amygdala calming mm -hmm. down. And then the third thing I like to do is I, I like to take my shoes off, if it's possible, and go and stand in the grass and look up at the sky and say, it may feel like my world is falling apart, right. but the mm -hmm. world is not falling apart, so which also helps me understand this is a part of the story, but this moment, this intensity, mm -hmm. this extreme emotion, it's not the whole of the story, mm -hmm. so you know, and, and there's a big, beautiful world out there. There's there's more to discover. There's people you're gonna meet and and the sun is really gonna shine really brightly again. And the the thing about not giving up, it's like don't give in up in this moment yes. because you'll be trading a million other moments that if you walk toward healing and hold on to the Lord and pursue a future in the right direction, it will be amazing. It may not ever look like you thought it was going to look. But Didn't you write a book about that? Yes, I sure did. It's not supposed to be this way. By the way, you talked about the sun and all that, which you already know all this, and that is the feet. We're on carpet. We're on the second floor. We're on concrete. You know, they're washing the feet in the Bible all the time. They were out there in the earth. Yeah, so the gross. idea of getting barefooted in grass, not just on your concrete and walking the track around the neighborhood school or whatever— to get your feet. This is still my father's world. Mm -hmm. That grass, that earth is is emanating up God's own precious energy. Mm -hmm. So the idea of getting grounded in there, because most of our life, even when we come home at night, kick your shoes off, but you're on carpet or mm -hmm. hardwoods, right? That's right. That's This is God's world to get my feet in the earth. That's beautiful. And so the last thing I'll say is, I remember when I was kind of consumed with this thought, like my life fell apart. But then one day I asked myself, what if it was actually falling together? Mm. And what if today I could invest wisely in stopping this feeling that I'm falling? And what if today could be the day that I start rising? I hope this has been helpful for you. You are gonna make it.